and you going to run Avon rubber again? Um, are we are we here? It's it's Wednesday, Gary. It's six o'clock. If it's waved yellow, <laughs> Colin, Colin, <good laughs> but afternoon. it's not. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Actually, it's Friday. Then it's double wave. No, it's Friday. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, no, tomorrow. Is tomorrow a holiday? Uh, it's a weekend. Ac according to the big world out there. It's a weekend. Yeah, whatever you guys do, do not eat cross hot cross buns because the cops are going to nab you. No, the, Gary, that's a bullshit story because actually what happened yes. is that if you um, administer the test correctly, it yes. is impossible for a hot cross bun to um, test positive. So... If you don't believe me, go to Snopes.com and check it out. Gary, this has been a busy week. It's, it has. This is ep um, episode number three for the week, yes. which is and fantastic. It's, and it's number 75 of Wave Yellow. And I'll tell you what, I really pooed in my pants on that drive from Santon to here. We had Kailami. In case you haven't guessed, this is the home of Franco Scrabanti Racing. It is, we're sitting on an absolute piece of history this is a genuine chevron it is gary said sit in the car i can't i need to respect the car i'm wearing jeans and a tacky shoe you can't respect a genuine chevron like that this is ah oh, when i was 11 years old i saw this car what makes you think anything's changed i saw this car race <laughs> in its gunston colors and I love racing cars. It's a Chevron B19. Mm. It's genuine. It's real. We're going to talk to Franco yeah. and and go through. This actually is a winner of King of the Hill and Classic Friday yes. in the same day because we're talking, this is our Jaguar Samola, what do you call it? Experience or trilogy or what? what's like Game of Thrones when they have a whole shit, I mean lots of you're them. Doing, you're doing all right. I'm just going to sit and watch you. Well, Gary, thank you for that. <laughs> just before we go, yeah. those of you that watched the show a bit earlier with Andre Besodin, I just want to say thank you to everybody. That, that was so cool yeah. for Andre. I mean, he, he came out of, he's fighting a lawsuit. And we know which one it is, and we know what side he's on, and he's, I don't think he's going to win. <laughs> <coughs> but what was nice is we had all the top boys in the country all sitting watching and what we were talking about and that sort of thing. We had Even we had... Um, the young guy that he mentioned, Stuart, Stuart White, who's busy yeah, but he around, said that playing around S Europe. Stuart's not driving for Red Bull. Um, it's for, for Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo supported Racing. Supported by Sauber F1. Yeah. So we have a potential future South African and Formula One. Gary. Let's all do this, guys. Hold thumbs, cross, cross the legs, cross the toes. The, the kid can do it. I know he can. I've got work to do. Yeah. And you've got somebody to talk <laughs> You <to>. work. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go over there and pretend I'm working while you chat with Franco. Gary, Facebook's not work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Franco, it's all yours. So, Franco Scrabanti, thank you very much for inviting us to your workshop, That's your beautiful. emporium. I've got to just say, there's a whole lot of stuff that happens in here, but we're in the... The classic room. This is a beautiful car, and I've got to come next to you because we've only got one microphone, and I've got to be careful of this other camera because if I kick it, then our production department will be the murin with me. You love this car, don't you? Yeah, it's. Uh, this is a great piece of history. Um, we bought it a good couple of years ago. It was in pretty sad condition. We sent it back to Paul Owen to rebuild for us at the Chevron factory. He's a very good friend of ours, and we've struck a a lifelong friendship yeah and that's the story of the car and the car's lot of, won a lot of big races this is the original gunston car that won uh, with brian redmond in 1971 the world series here at Kyle Army. i saw that the, the nine are unbelievable the the sound the and i i fell in love with the shape of this versus the yes. lola yes. i thought the lola was cock but a chevron was brilliant yeah they they're amazing cars i mean you know you know, it was, what, four years ago or something, we won the Friday and the rest of the weekend. It was, you know, when we arrived with this to take on the, 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 the GTRs and stuff, the people were laughing. We thought, oh, this is ridiculous. And we actually won it, so... But it doesn't weigh a lot, does it? No, it's all, it's, it's, it's sitting at about 600 kilos, eh? And you've got, it's got a BDG and a genuine BDG. And while we're on the... The subject of that family of, of proper racing engines. Um, condolences to Andrew Cave 
and his, his family, relatives, friends. Andrew was a magnificent technician, a magnificent guy who ran the workshop at Ford Motorsport under Bernie Mariner. He fell ill suddenly after being at, at uh, PE Racetrack on, over the weekend. To Andrew, your friends and family, race on fast in the sky, our condolences. Sorry, I just had to, I mean, huge respect to, to, to a guy like that. So it's got a BDG and it revs to what? Well, we rev it to 10. I mean, I've, I've missed a gear before and, and, and buzzed it to 11 and a half, and it was okay. So it's quite incredible. And when you buzzed it, you get that tingling in your wallet, don't you? Yeah, a bit more than that. Yeah, <laughs> I was quite worried about it. Because it's a genuine, proper BDG. BDG. That's why we don't use the car a lot anymore. We take it out for the Piper series, um, and we take it out for uh, the hill climb. What is it that makes this car, apart from its history, as a as a racing car and the way it reacts w what makes it special for you well it's like driving a big go-kart really eh? i mean i come from go-karts and it's just a it's a bigger go-kart it handles it handles exactly the same it brakes it accelerates and it handles and the, the gearbox it's still got a hewland um, um, yes, h pattern um, dog box and uh, i'm i'm almost speechless because it is it's a lacquer car. No, I mean, you know, when it, when it comes to racing cars, I mean, this is one of the holy grails of, of racing cars when you go back in time. I mean, they took on the, the Titans, like the 917s, back in the day, and they beat them. Incredible for a two-litre motor, a 1.9-litre motor. 1.975. So, <laughs> let's go and have a look around this car. Gary, a couple of things about it. So, it's old school. It's a space frame but with um, aluminium cladding on it. So some might call it a stressed or a semi-monocoque. Um, normal wishbone suspension, but the cool thing about back in the day is everything was just like maths, kids, triangles. Yesterday we, we sat in a, and looked at a roll cage of a car. Today we're looking at suspension. So you've got a triangle, and it, it gets hinged over here, little rose joints, beautiful rose joints, and you've got to love the way... The, the, you've got this little bar here. If you zoom out a bit, Gary, you'll see the full extent of it. And this thing just makes sure that everything is connected and, and stiff. From a Quibus who runs the shop and, and the build of these cars is absolutely meticulous. And you'll see the little paint dots on it. Paint dot means I've talked the bolt and I've checked it. Does two things. So it points out that, yeah, he's checked it and he's put his, his love and heart into it. But also you've got the paint marks, so if they move, you can see that a, um, the bolt might be, okay. be coming loose. Coil over uh, shocks, I mean, proper old school, like, it's, 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 it's not, it's simple, it's plain. <laughs> Lucas Gerling, um, uh, master cylinders, clutch, um, brake front, brake back, so that you've got, uh, you've got the, the, the bar that moves in between so that you can um, get the, the adjustment right. And a proper Volley blacktop battery. Lovely, absolutely lovely stuff. Battery, trying to get some weight forward in the car. And the rack and pinion steering, Gary, it's uh, sitting on, on blocks over here. And yeah. you've got the earth cable for the battery going into the, the chassis as well. And this used, you used to be able to move these things um, up and down to change the um, the bump steer of the car. Front radiator and pretty cool the way the uh, at the bottom of the inlet and we'll have a look at the, the the nose just now. It's got these three bolts over here which moves the splitter um, forwards and th this was a, a 1971 splitter. This is state of the art stuff. Essentially, it moves it forward and backward to to give you some fine tuning on the the aero balance. So in in other words, going to different tracks or different scenarios you're running, you could move that backwards and forwards depending on how you want the car to handle on a specific thing, or is it just a general thing for cooling? Gary, it will change the the the. the the aero balance of the car okay. and such as the aero is on this thing is another very interesting little bit of aero and I'm not sure it is a, it probably is real but we'll check at the the back so bits of brake cooling lovely little hoses let's I'm sorry I'm just talking about your car I just freaking love it um, so Colin, coming just, just before you carry on over there 
I see we've got these two pods over here, and there's a hole in them. What, what might they be for? Gary, they hold air. It's <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Franco, do you also know what these things are here for? When you, when you put the bonnet on, you'll see there's scoops, as you can see, they're by the ace of spades. Okay. And, and the, the air comes in, it's missing a, a part there now. And that should be onto there. Ah, so and it's and more like a brake duct. It's, it's a second brake, brake cooling duct, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Gary, I got caught out. I didn't know the answer to a question. That I've got, mm. I'll find another one to ask you. <laughs> okay, I'll get you do. <laughs> right, so. Um, all blanked off. Um, you've got uh, cool. Because we tested this morning, it was so cold that you know we just did two or three shakedown laps, and, and it just gives the 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 engine oil time to heat up quicker. So normally this would be open, and the scoop would allow air to come in. And Gary, come and have a look around the back here at some beautifully crafted and fabricated aluminium. Just look at the fit and finish of this nice little bend here. It is. This is a work of art. I love this stuff, man. And here's the, here's the, the oil cooler. So you get a high-pressure area on the other side of the oil cooler, and in theory, a lower-pressure area here because it, the back is all kind of open and it moves out. Now, Colin, Colin just quickly. Gary. Now we on something because we had a look at an exhaust system yesterday, and we haven't yep. had a look at an exhaust system now. This one's a bit thicker. Now, this is thick. How much difference does the thickness of those tubes make or is it tuned for the type of performance that engine can give you? Gary, they say a lot. Okay. And yes. Okay. What happens... St 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 <laughs> <in> again, <do laughs> I? No, you didn't. No, 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 no. A, an internal combustion engine is essentially an air pump. And the concept is get air in and get air out. So it sucks. You remember yesterday we spoke about suck? Suck, push, push pull. bang, blow. That's, we're talking about internal combustion engines. And it, and it was Wednesday night Franca? last night. <laughs> Franca, focus here. Gary, I, I really need you to focus. So it sucks air in through the, the inlet box, and, and the piston goes down. The valves, and there's two um, inlets and two exhaust valves. Okay. It's a four-valve um, um, overhead cam. This engine um, dates back to about 1969, 1970 was its, its first iteration. Um, and when the, it, it compresses and, and then the spark, so it, it sucks, pushes or presses, and then it bangs and as the piston goes down and then it blows. And that blowing is when this piston, I've got to focus on this very carefully, <laughs> and the piston comes up and it blows. Now, it's got to get the air out. And if you've got, just think of this, Gary, you've got a whole lot of pulses because every fourth revolution it, it will blow <laughs> so it, it bomb bomb so you've got these pulses going on of s think of them as sausages of air that yeah. come out of the engine and you now want those sausages of air this one to go normally a four cylinder one three four two is firing order you want this sausage of the air to carry on going here and then the next one to join behind it so essentially get my hands free are you, are you you've got me these this is sausages a, a tuned Link yes. Manifold. So this okay. sausage of air goes along and then the next one arrives. So this one sucks that one along, which sucks the next one, sucks the next one, and you've got um, better extraction of, of air out of the thing. So that's a theory. You've got to have, and the reason you've got all these twisty, twisty, uh, tuby thingies is that the theory is that you want the same volume um, or of, 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 of tube from the cylinder, okay. the end of the cylinder um, to here. So it is, and this is Ilkanol, which is, oh, Gary, this is special yeah. shit. It is, That's this is all Ilkanol. What's Ilkanol? It's exhaust pipe tube. Oh, okay. It's beautiful stuff. This is special, special. Right, and back in the day, Hewland gearboxes, for those of you who grew up on gearboxes, it's a dog box, five pattern, and here, if you can see here, Gary, goes through the, like, this is a universal joint typical of of um gearbox linkages and oh man it's lovely so to change your gear ratios on this thing you put an oil pan over here undo the back pull it off it stinks it's uh, gearbox oil is the worst stuff in the world baby poo smells better than gearbox oil other interesting things here you've got a drive shaft this is not a solid drive shaft it's a tube and the thing gary we, we like maths and science don't yeah. we 
And the thing about maths and science, and mm, just fucked, I mean, you've broken it, Gary. Um, the thing about, sorry, boss. it's FUBAR. Gary, you've destroyed a priceless car. This thing is worth about 23 and a half thousand euro, million euros. So I've just taken the half you've, off. You've just like, <laughs> you've, Gary. Discounted so it. The it's thing, the thing a, about. If it's a buyer online, I think I cannot take the money <laughs> for 23 and a half million euros. So Gary. With the thing about um, uh, the physics of materials is that a tube, a, a tube this wide is not very strong, but a tube that wide is stronger. Okay. So you can make it out of thinner material, and it's lighter. And of course, we all know that um, lightness and silicon works best in a racing car, and it's got um, these rubber donuts for coming out of the gearbox. This is like that's such. That's this is yeah yeah yeah. Okay, cool. So that because you can see there needs to be or there is an angle between the drive shafts, a fore and aft angle. Yeah. And then as the car goes up and down, this drive shaft moves around. So you've got to have some this, kind of this thing. This is there. more like a rubber, a rubber type of It's material. a rubber donut, Gary. Okay. Um, right. Around this side of the car, you've got some more pipes, ignition staff, stuff that goes roundy, roundy, vroom, vroom, vroom. And then here, look at this lovely aluminium. It is... I'm getting speechless again. I'm getting emotional. I properly, properly am getting emotional at this car. Gary, look at this. So Colin Chapman yeah. said once that to make a car go fast, you need to add lightness to it. And But to keep strength in a piece of metal, you need to bend the corners. because. Um, okay. So you punch a hole in it and bend the corner in it. And Oh, man. And look at this. Gary, this is so cute. Let me go around the other side, sorry. This is so I'm going to take the steering wheel off. And for all of those pundits, those purists, who say that it's not a period steering wheel, well, hello, it can't be a period steering wheel. It's a safety issue. So grow up and stop bitching. Um, here's the, the gear lever. Absolutely magnificent. It's so cute, eh? Hey? Little small. tiny thing. And when you think of the size of Franco's hands, I want to know how many times he's actually missed it. Well, I, I, we're going to ask him that now. <laughs> and the other important thing is a seat belt with a crutch strap. Yeah. You know our propensity for safety. Yes. And if you drive a racing car and you haven't got a crutch strap on, you're stupid. Yeah, agreed. Now with I respect. Okay, now I see something over here. Just one other thing because you're getting to the front of the car. We've got a filler cap there. Yes. And we've got a filler cap here. Are they both for fuel or is this one for water? Gary? When you put stuff in, what do you take out? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. But I don't know. I'm going to ask Franco. I know nothing. So I'm going to ask him. Franco, what's that, um, the little one for? Is that to let the air out? There's one, no. There's one for, there's one for oil um, and there's one for um, fuel. fuel. So, so we would imagine fuel? this would be oil because yeah. it's smaller. Yeah, well, the reason why it's exposed like that is because these cars, even at up to 24 hours, so even in Race Le Mans, so... You needed to get to the oil quickly because you're going to need oil in 24 hours, definitely. <laughs> you know, I, I, Gary thinks I'm joking about me getting emotional um, looking at bits and pieces of this car. Truly, it is a special, special bit of kit. Okay, a, bit of a, a bit of comments, if I may interrupt you. Uh, you know, Wayne, uh, Wayne Wanters online, he says, Colin, thank you very much for your emotional insight. Hats <laughs> off, good, awesome. And then we got another guy online here, um, Angelo from Cape Town. Franco, where is the Radical V8? I'm not going there. I'm not, I don't want you to answer that. I'll okay. uh, see you soon enough. It's under covers. Okay. And then uh, Greg Charm, an amazing car. Saw that many times in the old nine hours. Keep up the good work. Thank you for keeping that car alive. Thank you. And, and you, you owe the world, not just motorsport, you owe the world... Um, a duty of love to keep this car alive and running. Yeah, well, we do love the car. So, um, yeah, it is, it, it is almost one's duty when you when you are, are blessed enough to own a car like this to keep it going and for the public to see it. I mean, they love to see the old stuff. But it's a racing car, so therefore it must be raced. And that's what we do. That's what we do. And you're going up the hill on uh, Classic Friday. We've just spoken to Andre Bezadenot, and he's got his Lola... For Formula Atlantic car. Interesting race that. You've got a two liter BDG, he's got a 1600 BDA. Um, how, how's that race going to go? 
Look, uh, <laughs> we know how we want it to go, but I mean, uh, <laughs> he's a tough competitor, Andre, a good friend of mine, and, uh, but he's tough. He did um, say to send his regards when we saw him earlier today. Yes, hopefully he still says it after we've done battle on the Friday. <laughs> but, um, you know, on, on paper, the, the Formula Atlantic's quicker. They were quicker in period, so on paper it's quicker. But I know the car has been recently rebuilt. He, he doesn't know that car as well as I know this car simply because he hasn't had it as long as I have. So that might play into into our hands, uh, but we're not going to. We're just going to go as hard as we can, and uh, we know he's coming. So it's going to be a tough fight. You going to run the Avon slicks on it again, or you going to change to some proper sticky hill climb rubber? No. W what we found is, you know, in the past when we used that sort of rubber. These smaller cars, they don't like it. You need huge horsepower to pull that stickiness off. You even lose, lose you know, sort of straight line speed. So um, we stay on the stuff that's tried and tested with these cars. Now, you, you not only driving this car, there's another car you're going to drive. We, I don't want to talk about that now. But managing the jumping between two completely different motor cars, how do you manage your mind? Yeah, it is difficult. Um, you know... That's why a lot of the top drivers don't like to drive two cars on one day. I don't like to do it because you start to miss gear changes because you thought you were here and then you were there in the moment of when it goes down to sheer instinct, you know. But fortunately, when this race is over, we got the whole Saturday to acclimatize to the, to the other car. And, yeah. Well, the and the cars you're driving are so different. The one, there's one with flappy paddle, gonk, 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 electronic stuff. This is just raw, basic Simple racing. Yeah, this is raw. It's 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 raw. I mean, you you miss a gear. There's no safety on that, and I mean, this is a this, these engines are rare. So you know, every time you change, you almost like hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> What's your favorite um, in this car? The your, the your favorite challenging part of the the climb up the hill. Um, look, in any car, the most challenging part is is uh, that first big right-hander going up the hill, you know, because it's bumpy. You need to get your foot flat way before the apex so that you're rocketing up the hill because if you ruin it there, you run, you ruin it the whole way up the hill. And you can have a big off there, but if you don't get that right, you can, you can abandon the run because no matter what you get right after that, you've destroyed the beginning. So that's the most important part. And that feeling when you cross the line and you know that you've put together a reasonable run, what's that like? No, it's exhilarating, obviously. The difference... comes no matter what you do for two days or the or the one day in this case uh it, it, not, nothing counts until that final run so you can't choke on the final run <laughs> that's when the game's got to be at its best was it marshall mathers who said you've only got one shot basically that's it franco this has been very for me very very special thank you for the privilege of sticking my uh, of pouring over this motor car it's it's been fantastic, and I think the next time we'll see you in this car will be um, at the Jaguar Samoa Hill Climb. And I wish you luck. I wish you a spectacle of entertainment in showing this car off. Thank you. We, we appreciate that, and we love showing the car to the public because we know how much they love it, especially the enthusiasts like uh, the diehards like yourself and, and me. Guys, Gary, I'm got a, there must be some dust here because I've Something's flown into my eye. <laughs> I'm glad. My boy, no, this my is My is rubbing off on you. This is a proper, proper a, piece yeah. of kit. If it wasn't for those fans out there. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't count. A gentleman yeah. like this, allowing us to get this close into the inner sanctuary in their space. We couldn't talk about the exciting things we try and do. And try and get those people out there as excited about motorsport as you and I. Oh, I love this sh stuff. I nearly so, said a word. Franco. I any, have to say thank you very much. Pleasure. Now, can we go downstairs? No. no. Apparently we can't go downstairs, but it is Friday night. It was yeah. 6 o'clock somewhere. And may the Easter bunny hop until he can't hop anymore. Or she can't hop anymore. <laughs> and don't eat too much chocolate because it goes straight to the bum. But there are some exciting things happening next week. We're having a look at another rally car. And we are... Joining this gentleman again, but you guys have to watch the social media space to let you know on what day 
and what is actually going to happen. I'm not putting anything out there. I'm not letting a damn thing out the bag. <laughs> you really have. No, I just said sometime next week, we're going to be speaking to him again. Yeah. So bear with us. Watch the social media space. We'll fire it up for you. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be pretty excited about what Franco is going to release to us sometime next week. Thanks for watching. Hug your bunny, hug your significant other, and have an absolutely magnificent uh, weekend. Be safe and don't drive like a dick. Cheers.